welcome back so we will continue uh, with our previous discussion and we are we were discussing uh, different models of heat transfer during nucleate boiling so the present model which in which we are interested in is vapor liquid exchange model so <coughs> as the mechanism has been described to you a bubble as it as it changes its uh, shape and size it acts as a micro pump when it expands it pushes fluid when it contracts or leaves the surface so it induces fluid motion towards the center of the bubble okay so with this we can have uh, as i have told that we can estimate the liquid flow involved in the pumping process and uh, what is the change of temperature this liquid will undergo then the change of enthalpy and heat transfer we can calculate assuming that the bubble is a hemispherical bubble and uh, the fluid movement associated with this is also hemispherical uh, uh, is also of the same volume as of the bubble so we can write uh, the equation for uh, heat transfer see the equation for heat transfer will be sorry this is red one qs is equal to rho l c p l 2 pi by 3 r max cube multiplied by your t w plus t l by 2 minus t l multiplied by f. So, this is the heat flux q s is the heat flux rho l is the uh, density of the liquid C p l is the specific heat this is coming from the bubble volume r max is the radius of the bubble at its departure t wall t w is the t wall temperature of the wall t l is the bulk liquid temperature and uh, f is the frequency of this bubble departure so with this we will simplify it to get rho l c p l 2 pi by 3 half of t w minus t l into f. So, this is what we will get. Now, this gives the heat transport due to one bubble. All right. If there is one bubble, the volume of one bubble we have considered. So, this gives the heat transport due to one bubble. Now, if there are number of bubble and uh, the um, number of bubble from where I will get, we will get it uh, uh, from the number density of the nucleation site. So, with some sort of a factor like that, we can multiply to get it over the entire surface n a dash that is gi that gives us the density of the nucleation site. So, with this then we will have an estimate of the heat flux due to uh, boiling. Now, this expression you please see with bit carefully. First thing here no latent heat is involved. This is one way of looking into the problem I am not telling that this is the correct way of looking into the problem but no latent heat is involved. So, basically this is some sort of a single phase correlation applied for uh, boiling process. Second thing there is a very important observation this we have already mentioned and again I am mentioning that q s is directly proportional to t w minus t l. So, it is directly proportional to t w minus t l that is the temperature difference between the wall and the bulk of the fluid. But all the experiment shows that this relationship is not reflected 
by the experimental data. Uh, one example can be given that let us say there is a 300 percent increase in T w minus T l. The heat flux that increases merely by 15 to 20 percent. So, that does not reflect the way the formula has been made whether it is correct or not that is not reflected by the experimental observation. Then people could see that as T w minus T l increases or rather as T w increases uh, degree of superheat or rather degree of subcooling that uh, increases. So, a few phenomena occurs which is not visible from this uh, equation at the first glance. What happens? As the degree of subcooling increases as the liquid bulk is more subcooled, we will have the departure diameter of the bubble smaller and smaller. This experience we are having in any in any case of boiling. So, even if you uh, heat oil over a uh, sorry heat water over a pan, you will find that it is when it is subcooled the bubbles are leaving the um, pan surface heated pan surface at a smaller diameter. As the pan surface temperature increases and the subcooling of the bulk of the liquid decreases, then only you get bigger and bigger bubble. As you go towards the saturation, you will get bigger and bigger bubble. So, this is increasing, but R max will decrease. Okay. And also, what has been found that frequency changes, the bubble release frequency changes with the temperature difference. So, something is increasing, other factors are decreasing, so they compensate each other. So, that is why we do, do not get a direct increase of Q s as T w minus T l is decreasing, sorry increasing. So, this is one of the reason. Another thing as I have already mentioned, as I have already mentioned that uh, this is also important. So far, we are looking into the bubbles. Let us say there is one nucleation site we are looking into bubble. And the mechanism of heat transfer due to the movement of the bubble that we are concentrating. So, basically this is mechanism 1 for heat transport and so far what we have done we have concentrated on that. But between the bubble there are spaces where also the heat hot surface is in contact with fluid. So, there will be some other mechanism of heat transfer which we are not bothering at all. So, this we can call mechanism 2. So, some people have also suggested that let us uh, consider these two and then make some sort of a improved model. So, if I try to do that, what we will have is this. Heat flux that is equal to A m c by A total. Q m c plus A n c by A total P m c. Let me explain what it is. People are, we can assume that there are two mechanisms working side by side. One is micro convection which I have called the mechanism 1 see the bubble are moving, bubbles are moving. So, there is some sort of micro convection. Even one can involve the uh, sorry the latent uh, heat of vaporization in this mode of heat transport. And then in between the bubble there is uh, um, uh, solid area which is in contact with liquid. So, there natural convection will take place. 
So, one is micro convection and one is natural convection. Now, natural convection this is more or less constant because if the temperature difference remains constant, then what is the heat transport due to natural convection that is also constant. But micro convection a bubble grows then departs. So, there is a cycle. So, micro convection this is dependent on time. So, micro convection if I want to calculate the rate of heat transfer. So, we have to do it by uh, integrating over the entire period of cycle. Natural convection rather is straightforward. So, with this this particular with this assumption this particular formula has been written. So, total amount of heat transfer is the average heat transfer during my I mean due to micro convection multiplied by area which is responsible for micro convection and this has been divided by the total area plus there is another mode of heat transfer by natural convection. The area which is involved in natural convection heat transfer divided by the total area. So, this is how we will get the heat transfer from a boiling surface. Okay. So, this of course, is uh, not a uh, typical model, but uh, it, it, it gives uh, an, uh, a corrective measure. Suppose, we want to do the boiling heat transfer prediction, it gives some sort of a corrective measure. As I have told that there are many, many models of boiling heat transfer. Another model I like to discuss which is bit interesting may not be very successful in predicting boiling heat transfer, but it is bit interesting that is known as inverted stagnation flow model, inverted stagnation flow model. What is inverted stagnation flow model? Let us say there is a surface. Now, stagnation flow means if the flow is directed towards it. So, if the flow is directed towards it, then what will happen? the streamlines will be like this. If we reverse the direction of the streamlines, we will get inverted stagnation flow model. This is a stagnation flow. Why we are considering inverted stagnation flow model? It is like this, that a bubble column is there. So, bubbles are leaving like this. There is another bubble column. So, bubbles are leaving like this. So, as the bubbles are leaving like this, as I have told that it will draw fluid. So, it will draw fluid like this. So, you can see that this is reverse of uh, stagnation flow and we can assume that this is your s, the distance between these two are s. So, we can we can think of some sort of idealization, this is your y, this is your r direction and uh, this is your delta y this is your delta y. Okay. Delta y is the outer edge of the thermal boundary layer. Okay. <coughs> so, with this for laminar axisymmetric stagnation flow for laminar axisymmetric
the ignition flow, we are having H R K L liquid conductivity is equal to 1.32 U infinity R by nu L to the power 0.5 P R L to the power 0.33. So, this is your correlation for laminar axisymmetry uh, stagnation flow and then u infinity is equal to a r. A is a constant and r is your radius. Okay. And here we are assuming that the bubble columns are distributed in regular array and uh, uh, the radius of uh, this one, the zone which is affected by a bu bubble column. So, that is given by S by 2. So, that means R is equal to S by 2 in the present case. So, what we will get from this particular equation? We will get from this particular equation H is equal to 1.32 K L by S A S square by nu L to the power 0 0.5 and P R L to the power 0.33. So, this is what I will get. Now, what again one can do, one can bring n a dashed, which is the density of the of the activated nucleation site and with that one can write H is equal to 1.32 K L N A dashed to the power 0 0.5 A by N A dashed multiplied by P R L to the power 0 0.33. Now, based on some experimental data A by N A dash ok. So, ultimately H is equal to Q T W minus T saturated is equal to 61.3 P R L to the power 0.33 K L N A dash to the power 0.5. So, this kind of a relationship has been given. Okay. So, this is one model um, again uh, a different kind of approach has been taken for analyzing boiling heat transfer. Now, <coughs> let me tell you a few things. Uh, of course, uh, another model let me uh, discuss without any mathematics and then we will go back for a general discussion of all the models which I have described so far. <coughs> See, uh, so far whatever uh, model we have described, all of them uh, assume that some sort of a, um, I mean many of them assume that some sort of mass exchange is there along the interface, but the exact way the mass transfer is taking place, mass uh, evaporation is taking place, none of these models um, they concentrate on it. There is another class of model, those are known as micro layer evaporation models. 
micro layer evaporation models. So, in the micro layer evaporation model, sometimes I have discussed this also, but let, let us recapitulate. The vapor is assumed to have some sort of hemispherical shape like this. The vapor is assumed to have some sort of an hemispherical shape like this. And uh, here we are having liquid, but the liquid here near the vapor uh, base or up to this point or up to this point depending on the um, depending on the size of the vapor bubble is high temperature. And here of course, T wall is the highest temperature. So, from this T wall heat will be transferred and due to conduction only. So, through this through this micro layer and as it is transferring. So, from here your evaporation will take place, this is your evaporation. So, that is why this is called a micro layer evaporation model and the bubble will grow uh, large enough and then it will leave the surface. So, this is basically valid for inertia controlled growth. <coughs> And a full bubble cycle can be described based on this uh, micro layer evaporation. And uh, then uh, what can be done that uh, the entire amount of heat transfer by some integration process one can also find out from this micro layer evaporation. So, there are model based on this micro layer evaporation and uh, uh, part of the I mean uh, some, uh, some experimental data can be predicted very well by this micro layer evaporation model also. This is bit recent model all the models which I have described those are bit earlier model this is bit recent model. So, uh, this model is also applicable. Now, <coughs> let me tell you let me have so many models I have told. So, let me have uh, some sort of overview of the models. Now, one thing we have to understand that none of these models are some sort of a master key that for all situations of boiling we will have a good result or good prediction from these models. So, this is first thing we have to remember that none of not a single model will predict all the boiling data very, uh, very effectively. There are certain models which predict the boiling data of water or aqueous fluid very well. There are certain other models which predict the data for the dielectric fluid like refrigerant very well. Now, <coughs> in general the Rosenau correlation and the variation of Rosenau correlation that gives a good prediction. So, one model which I can recommend is that the first correlation your Rosenau correlation first correlation what I have told. So, that is the model which I can uh, recommend which I can recommend um, to start with to start with I can recommend Rosenau model. And its variations there are certain variation of this model. Second type of model which are also very um, showing which are also showing um, good predictability that is your micro layer evaporation model. Again, if we make a comparison between these two model, Rosenau model is much simpler, this, this involves number of steps, but even then the microlayer evaporation model is good. The 
experimental the experimental uh, evidence which shows that this is proportional to two very important parameters n a dash to the power a and t w minus t saturated to the power b. There will be of course, some numerical constants etcetera, but for any boiling experiment this type of relationship is obtained. Okay. Out of this it is very difficult to predict N A dash that is the nucleation site density. Nucleation site density is very difficult because it is a material property, I mean it cannot be determined uh, so easily. Uh, some people have suggested that T w minus T sat with heat flux there could be a uh, good estimate if we take d is equal to 3, but again these are not universally applicable in some experiment we will see that these are applicable in some other experiment this is not applicable. Then the final uh, uh, final what can we say the final message which I like you to take that boiling heat transfer it is uh, so complex phenomena that none of the models which we have developed which have been developed so far are very suitable. If known fluid known surface conditions are there then it is better to apply the Rosenhau model. If you can uh, give more time for the calculation etcetera, then micro layer evaporation model is also good. Otherwise, if it is a totally unknown kind of a fluid, the surface is non weighting, it is not a very good weighting surface. So, in those cases probably the experimental result one has to rely on. If we want to do, if we want to apply any kind of prediction, we should be ready that there should be a very large amount of uh, factor of safety or factor of ignorance for any design calculation. Okay. <coughs> then lastly what I can tell that CFD modeling are becoming important tool for um, the prediction of boiling heat transfer particularly nuclear boiling heat transfer. Now the limitation of CFD modeling CFD modeling is becoming important, but the limitations are let me tell you limitations what are the limitations. Limitation first limitation is that so far only one bubble. or two or three bubbles have been modeled, because of restriction of the computational time. So, we cannot model very large number of bubbles that is one restriction. Second restriction is that, that variation of scale variation of scale means as I have told that we have got a bubble. So, here if we see the liquid layer is very very thin and even it can go to the molecular level and then from the molecular level we have to go to the uh, level of the bubble and not only bubble we have to take a uh, some amount of surrounding fluid. So, there is a uh, there is a variation of scale. So, unless we take the multi scale approach this this, uh, this simulation cannot be done properly. 
and uh, last but not the least is that certain issues for which the physics is not known like your density of nucleation site. So, we do not know how this can be uh, <coughs> this can be fixed or this can be assigned to your uh, simulation or model. Then the process of nucleation this physics is also not known fully. So, that is why the if we also want to do CFD we have got large number of limitations and we we are handicapped with that, but it is showing some sort of promise may be in coming future one can have more success with CFD modeling. So, this <coughs> brings us to the end if we again look back that we were in the boiling carb delta T w. So, somehow this portion we have done uh, relatively with ease the, the portion where you are having fully developed nucleate boiling we cannot do much, but probably with some correlation we can tackle it. So, we have come to this point this is your critical heat flux point or maximum heat flux point. The critical heat flux point or maximum heat flux point is very important because in most of the industrial situation we operate only on the nucleate boiling regime. So, in the nucleate boiling regime if we operate then we have to know where we have to terminate and we have to terminate at your critical heat flux. So, the maximum amount of heat flux to which your boiling system can be um, <coughs> subjected to is your critical heat flux. So, this has to be known and if we violate this then we uh, there is a possibility that we may go directly here and there will be a high rise of temperature. So, <coughs> people have spent lot of time in the determination of critical heat flux or maximum heat flux. So, critical heat flux or maximum heat flux. Okay. Critical heat flux or maximum heat flux. Now, <coughs> critical heat flux or maximum heat flux if we see that the phys physical mechanism, so physical mechanism is something like this. There is a heated surface, first we will see isolated bubble, then what will happen uh, as the uh, as the heat flux is increasing. So, what will happen the there will be large number of nucleation sites and neighboring bubble they will actually come very closer. So, ultimately you can get this kind of things. So, let us say this is your liquid and this is some sort of a vapor column or this is your vapor. Okay. So, this is some sort of a vapor column or vapor jet we will get this one. So, we will get also something like this side by side. So, this is also vapor and here you will have the liquid okay and also we will have liquid somewhere over here. So, 
this is your liquid. Now, <coughs> certain thing we will find out. Now, if I uh, the physical observation, if I um, summarize it, it will be like this. First, what we will find out? The as the heat flux increases, heat flux increases, adjacent bubbles adjacent bubble will coalesce, adjacent bubble will coalesce. Then we will get vapor columns formed, vapor columns are formed. Okay. So, the vapor column we can see the vapor is moving in the downward direction, sorry vapor is moving in the upward direction as it is a lighter fluid. Then the liquid that has to come in the downward direction, the liquid will be coming in between two vapor columns, let us say the liquid has to come in the downward direction. Okay. <coughs> so, vapor column formed, liquid moves in the downward direction, okay. then what we will find? as the liquid moves in the downward direction and vapor moves in the upward direction, as the vapor velocity increases, liquid may be taken up. So, instead of moving in the downward direction, the liquid may be taken up. If this happens, then what? If this happens, if liquid is taken up, then the surface is not getting a replenishment of the liquid. Okay. Then obviously, the heat transfer rate will fall. So, the second phase, what we can write? <coughs> as the nucleation site density increases, there is a packing of vapor bubble. over the surface, over the surface there is a packing of vapor bubble. Okay. Earlier isolated bubbles were generating, they are leaving, now there will be a packing of vapor bubble over the surface. Okay. Now the vapor leaves the surface. in the form of form of jets arranged in a regular array arranged in a regular array okay Now, let us 
think of slightly different figure. So, this is some sort of a vapor jet or vapor slug let us say. So, how it is sustained? This is sustained by the evaporation which is coming from here, because that is that is the place where it is having connection with liquid. Now, this vapor jet it cannot grow infinitely some somewhere this vapor slug will break and uh, leave the surface. Now, what is happening till it leaves the surface it is getting the supply of vapor from this liquid. Now, before it reaches the critical mass for leaving the surface, if the liquid shown over here by this red dot, they are dried up, then what will happen? A vapor patch will form. Suppose in this way, it this vapor slug leaves, another vapor slug blows, then there is no dry patch. There are a number of stems, vapor stems that is true, but even then the surface is having some contact with liquid. But before this vapor slug leaves, if this liquid dries up, liquid film dries up, then what is happening? The formation of a vapor patch or vapor blanket. So, this will give rise to your transition boiling. This will give rise a shift from the nucleate boiling to the transition boiling and this is known as where it will happen, this is known as critical heat flux. So, <coughs> let me tell. So, number 4, vapor slugs are fed by the stems separated by liquid film. If the film dries up, a vapor blanket will form. Form. So, we will go to transition boiling. So, this could be also a mechanism for your uh, for your critical heat flux to take place. Now, there are different models for prediction of critical heat flux. So, different models for the prediction of critical heat flux. First one is known as hydrodynamic model. And second one, the microlayer model. Of course, the result of both the models, there are a lot of similarities. Okay. So, let me explain what is microlayer model and what is first, let us start with the hydrodynamic model. Hydrodynamic model boiling heat transfer, the contribution of this Russian scientist Kutuzov 
Kuta Tillard J, his contribution is are many. So, he has first postulated certain thing uh, drawing the similarity between some phenomena in chemical engineering and um, this critical heat flux. <coughs> now, so what he has told that flooding in a column, what is flooding in a column? So, suppose we have got a tube, okay. so in this tube we have got liquid injection from the side. So, if you have got liquid injection from the side, so liquid will fall through the over the wall liquid will fall like this. And then from the bottom you are supplying a gas. So, the gas will move in the upward direction. So, now what we are getting? We are getting that liquid flow is there in the downward direction and side by side gas flow is there in the upward direction. So, if the gas velocity is small then we will have a smooth liquid film, but if the gas velocity is high, then you will have some sort of an undulation or ripple on the liquid film. So, this is your liquid. And this is your gas. So, we will have some sort of an undulation in the liquid film and when the gas velocity is very high, then what will happen? gas will try to push the liquid in the opposite direction. So, this phenomenon is known as flooding and this is due to some instability which is known as Kelvin Helmholtz instability. This is due to Kelvin Helmholtz instability. So, Kuta Dillard J, he could see or he could postulate that the critical heat flux phenomena and the flooding phenomena, it has got certain similarity. And uh, he has first given some sort of relationship, not based on very rigorous mathematics, but uh, based on some sort of logic, the logic which I have told already. So, based on this logic, he could give some relationship. The relationship which he has given is this, Q max that is equal to C k rho g to the power half h f g multiplied by g rho f minus rho g to sigma to the power 1 fourth. Okay. So, this is the relationship which he has given <coughs> and C k obviously, this is an empirical constant. So, C k is 0.131 and this has been not obtained uh, by any theory, this has been obtained by fitting the data. So, <coughs> Kuta Dillard J was the first person then to establish uh, some sort of a similarity or to, to point out some sort of a similarity between the flooding phenomena and the phenomena of critical heat flux. Then later on, work done by Jubar and uh, after that Leonhard and Dhir. Leonhard and Dhir. Jubar is again very, very 
uh, very very famous for his contribution in boiling heat transfer and Leonhard is also very famous for his contribution in boiling heat transfer. Dhir, Dhir is uh, of Indian origin, V K Dhir, he is also, he is, uh, he has also contributed uh, very substantially for the theory of boiling heat transfer, he is of Indian origin. So, uh, Kuta de Larger's theory, then Joubert's um, modification and then again the work of Leonard and Dhir, both are on the same line. So, all these are for the development of your hydrodynamic theory of critical heat flux. Now, this hydrodynamic theory of critical heat flux, it depends on two kinds of instabilities. One is a Taylor wave type phenomena, another is your Kelvin Helmholtz instability. Now, <coughs> what is Taylor instability or Taylor sometimes it is also called Rayleigh Taylor type of instability. It is like this that there are two fluids uh, from the stability criteria, always the heavier fluid tries to be at the bottom and the lighter fluid tries to be at the top. But in case of a boiling process, what is happening? Suppose this is a horizontal surface. This is a horizontal surface, here the bubbles are forming. The bubble are, bubble, uh, bubbles are forming, but let us say somehow they cannot immediately leave the surface. Then what is happening? We are having some sort of a vapor and at the top we are having liquid. So, we are having sorry, we are having a uh, lighter liquid below and a heavier liquid at the top. So, obviously, it is an unstable situation. Okay. Unstable situation means what we will get? Suppose we have got some sort of a vapor layer and some sort of a liquid. So, obviously, we will not get a smooth surface, we will get undulated surface. Okay. I think time is up. So, we have to continue next day. So, next day we will continue from this 